she's called uh, IT and uh, asked Jake for a little help. And Jake has gone ahead and reached out to Loan's PC. And uh, what Loan is going to do is read off a security uh, credential. Sure. Ready? 591144. And basically that gives the user consent, so now that, that Loan has approved Jake coming in and, and uh, remote controlling her system. <laughs> and uh, since her system is a, is a larger monitor, uh, supporting higher resolution, we're just kind of showing off the fact that uh, now we can, uh, we can support those higher resolution monitors. And you can see some of the just sheer performance going on in the, the session. But what's really cool is, of course, uh, is the ability for this connection to stay persistent. Mm -hmm. Right, since we're at the hardware level, we're below the BIOS, we're below the operating system. So if Loan's PC was really messed up, had blue screening or had some other kind of issues, um, Jake could go ahead and get in and try and fix it. Uh, and then, of course, maybe needed to reboot it. So that's what he just did remotely. <laughs> and Jake can see everything. So as the system comes up, uh, maybe he needed to get into the BIOS to do anything on, on boot up to go ahead and take care of uh, Loan's issue. Uh, and all the while, the connection has stayed persistent because we're at the hardware level. So an enhancement to our hardware-based uh, KVM features for this generation of Viper. Running it all in his, in his uh, professional build here. So he's been running all the configuration in that KVM and stuff in his kind of, if you will, his IT build. But in this scenario, uh, we've kind of done a little consumerization type of approach. And, and Jake has a personal OS. And uh, the great thing about this with the Citrix Zen client is uh, it's taking full advantage of our tremendous processor graphics on the Sandy Bridge generation. And Jake's uh, just kind of showing this off by playing a little bit of a StarCraft game <laughs> in his other virtual environment. So you can see it's taking full advantage of the, uh, the processor graphics there, and he can easily switch back and forth. Could also be an example where uh, Jake uh, supports a help desk and has to have multiple operating system environments in order to support his users, or maybe Jake is a developer and is developing across uh, differing operating systems and needs to quickly and easily move back and forth. And the, the great performance as well as, of course, underlying all of the vPro capabilities are the support for virtualization, our, our, our VT instructions in the CPU as well as trusted execution for securing and protecting the execution of these virtual envi environments in this type 1 hypervisor model. Now of course there are other types of virtualization and of course Sandy Bridge would support any one of those whether they're client side or server side but it really gives you the best design point and the best flexibility to support any one of those virtualization workloads uh, with this latest generation processors. This is the only way that I can authenticate that actually this system belongs to me. Okay. Right? And that way the IT can say, hey, okay, I allow you to have access to the VPN. I allow you to have access to certain websites mm -hmm. within our enterprise. Um, so with IPT here, Jake is we've, going to We've essentially eventually. taken that token and embedded it, it in the platform. Exactly. Okay. So we're talking so. hardware. Now we're bringing hardware with security here. Gotcha. So taking this, not eliminating it, taking this same algorithm that's on these key fobs, actually putting it into the, the hardware. Okay. I must have missed a step before I reset it. <laughs> so what Jake is doing is actually going in and actually going to eBay. He's going to reset the demo. The reset again. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as he can get the demo reset yeah, here. That's all right. No sweat. <laughs> Right, exactly. <laughs> Buying some things on eBay? Yeah. Yeah. Valentine's thing. There it is. There we go. <clears throat> so you get that little paint up so little paint. VIP. So this is the software basically that interfaces right. the hardware that's inside of there. Gotcha. And it's the idea is that the verbiage is supposed to be really simple for users to understand, so we're not using like one time password or uh, any any terms that users wouldn't get. So really it's do you mm -hmm. want extra security? Yes. Uh, it's gonna take me to the login page. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and log into my eBay account. And uh, the software is going to automatically generate um, the one time okay. pin that usually is on that key okay. and enter it into the web page for me. Yeah. And it, eBay, as you go through it twice, so it takes about 30 seconds for it to go through the whole process. Hmm. Um, but one of the key things that we're trying to address is the phishing attacks. 
right, which mm -hmm. is the most prevalent attacks that is happening today. Sure. Right? Um, so with phishing attack, if you could think about 31,000, you know, phishing sites coming up every month, yeah, it's pretty prevalent. It's so, bad news. Bad news for, you know, end users, but also enterprise, <clears throat> too, especially if you think about banking institutions, right? Mm -hmm. They're the one that's going to be liable for whatever a theft occurrence actually happens, right? Mm -hmm. So therefore, you know, having this IPT available to their end users, it, it protects them in the hardware. Sure. Right. Okay, so I've uh, associated my computer to my eBay account, so that is a one-time thing. Uh, so now whenever I come back and log in, uh, the software should automatically just type the pin in and I'm in. Okay. So, ease of use, something that you know, which is your user ID and password, mm -hmm. right? And something that is yeah. a have. Yeah. Right? The two married together, you get more solid security. Sure. So you've got you've got an, an encryption, um, an encrypted key now on this computer permanently, and it's tied to your eBay account. Right, and it generates new keys. Okay, it's, yeah. And every obviously, if, if somebody doesn't know your password and they're using your computer, if they hacked in somehow, um, they're not getting in without that password anyway. Right. So, right. Gotcha. So this is a, a brand new uh, second generation Core V Pro Core. It's a Core i5. Okay. Uh, from HP, their small form factor elite lineup that'll be coming out uh, this year. And really, what I'm showing here is an example that uh, I'm a product manager, and uh, I've got a lot of stuff that I need to do to get ready for my product launch. And what I'm showing is the great performance capabilities, both from a, a computational perspective as well as processor graphics perspective. So here I'm, I'm uh, taking a real-time rendering of my uh, Sudo product. So I've got a great job here. I get to uh, play with these toys and stuff. <laughs> and um, I'm showing off this real-time rendering. So as, as it rotates, it's doing the real-time rendering. So you can kind of see this great performance. And you can also visually see it up here in the uh, Turbo Boost 2.0 little widget that we have. Mm -hmm. So this is the second generation of Turbo Boost technology on our core families. Uh, and in this time, we've, we've added yet more intelligence that helps the system give the dramatic performance boost when the application demands it, as well as put it to sleep when it doesn't. Something that uh, I call Huggy, hurry up and get idle. So the faster I can complete a task, the faster I can put it to sleep to save power both energy power and desktops as well as battery life and notebooks, right? So in this scenario, we've got Turbo Boost running. You can see it kicking in, and, and uh, I used to have the, uh, the little uh, task oh, manager right. running. That's all right. It's just kind of visual fun, right? So you've got four threads going. Right, so we've got all this, and you can see it boosting up and the widget boosting up as it, done, as it does the, micro, uh, the, the rotation and rendering, right? But also, more and more of the world is moving to high-def content, and it's not just consumers, it's a business too. So in my product briefs and, and the selling and marketing of my products, I had to take in a lot of this video, bring it into the system, do a lot of editing and manipulating, and creating these little, these little videos that go out on YouTube and everywhere else, right? Again, to try and promote the products. Mm -hmm. So with the second generation, we brought Intel Quick Sync video technology into uh, the portfolio, yeah. and that basically more than doubles the performance capabilities of bringing in that video, manipulating and creating the great 1080p content that we're showing here. And of course, while I've got all this stuff running, I've got a lot of headroom to spare, so I can do all my normal office productivity work, my collaboration work, and everything, because I've got performance and power to spare. Sure, you're at about, well, you're oscillating between 14 and 20 some odd percent, there. that's pretty good. Right. And uh, surprising that every time the model rotates, the uh, the meter pegs on the the CPU widget there, and then goes right back down. <laughs> yeah, because it, it finishes the computation. Yep. Puts it to sleep. Has to rotate it again. Finishes the computation. Puts it to sleep. So its base clock is two point five gig, and it's looks like it's spiking it's up to three gig there up, occasionally. It might go up to three point one. I saw it once go up to uh, three point one. When it needs it, yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. And again, the, the second generation is also keying off of the thermals, just like our first generation, but we're, we're adding more intelligence. 
basically, if the, the CPU has been cold for a while, it's been inactive, it's got more headroom because it takes a little bit of time for it to heat up. Mm -hmm. So I can use some of that time and run it faster and hotter uh, until it hits its thermal design points and then I can cool it back down and throttle it back down. But I'm adding more intelligence to get more boost into the system. And of course with processor graphics built all right in there, I can also do some dynamic balancing between my processor graphics and my computational side. Right, so if I don't